Hello everyone. This is a video all about the external genitalia or vulva. Vulva generally consists of the main regions such as mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, vestibule and vestibular glands. So let's discuss about all these parts of the external genitalia in detail. So the first one is the mons pubis. Mons pubis is the anterior part of the vulva. It is also called as mons veneris or pubic mound. Mons pubis consists of the pubic hair and these pubic hair are being grown only after the female attains puberty or maturity. Mons pubis mainly consists of round fatty tissues over the pubic symphysis of the pubic bones. Mons pubis is said to be present in both males as well as females. But in females it tends to it tends to be larger in size. Then what is the function of mons pubis? Mons pubis consists of certain glands and their secretions are generally referred to as the pheromones and these pheromones are involved in sexual attraction. Next is the labia majora. Labia majora is made up of thick folds of the skin. So this labia majora consists of adipose tissue and this adipose tissue generally protects the vulva against the exterior stresses. Labia majora is said to be scrotum. Why? Labia majora is said to be homologous to scrotum. That is, in case of scrotum, sorry, in case of the male reproductive system, the scrotum protects the testis. Similarly here, this labia majora in the vulva protects the inner soft delicate parts such as labia minora, clitoris, urethral orifice and vaginal orifice. Next is the third one, labia minora. Labia minora also has a pair of thin fleshy folds of the skin which are pink in color. This labia minora lacks fatty tissue and hairs but also consists of the sebaceous and sweat glands. Labia minora in its epithelium there is presence of a connective tissue. So that connective tissue secretes uh, collagen and elastin which provides strength and elasticity to labia minora. Labia minora is said to be homologous to penile urethra. Next one is the clitoris. Clitoris is being seen towards the anterior part of the vulva and above the clitoris there is presence of a clitoral hood. Clitoral hood is the fusion of the labia minora towards the anterior part uh, where it forms a hood like structure and this clitoral hood is also called as prepuce. So below that of the clitoral hood there is presence of this clitoris. Clitoris is an erectile tissue as similar in case of the male reproductive system. The penis which is present so that contains the erectile spongy tissues. So similarly here clitoris is said to be homologous to penis as it contains a pair of corpora cavernosa that is a spongy tissue. So clitoris in the females it is called as glans clitoridis. So that is clitoris. What is the function of clitoris? Clitoris is the structure. So during the mating process, if it is being rubbed, so that gives a sexual pleasure to that of the female and thereby making the efficiency, increase in the efficiency of the mating or the copulation. Next is vestibule. Vestibule is the place which is being located uh, towards to that of the external urethral orifice and uh, 
the vaginal orifice. So this particular place which is being present, so that is called as vestibule. Thereafter, this vestibule is homologous to membranous urethra, which means structurally the organs which are similar, they are said to be homologous, where the functions differ. So vestibule, in case of uh, the female it is being seen, and uh, in case of the male reproductive system, membranous urethra is present. So this membranous urethra in the male reproductive system is a place which is being located in between the urinary system and the reproductive system. So similarly in case of the female, vestibule is being located in between the urinary system and the reproductive system. So that is why it is called as homologous to membranous urethra. Next is the vestibular glands. So these vestibular glands are those which can be called as homologous to that of the male accessory glands where male accessory glands secretes the secretion and that facilitates the process of the copulation. So similarly here vestibular glands in the females so they are two in number one is called as the lesser vestibular gland or skinny's gland or paraurethral gland. So these lesser vestibular glands are being located on the either sides of the urethral orifice and greater vestibular gland also called as Bartholin's gland so they are located on the either sides of on the either sides of the vaginal orifice so lesser vestibular gland are said to be homologous to prostate gland which means the secretion the maximum secretion comes from that of the skinny's gland and uh, uh, greater vestibular glands are very small, they are pea sized and they secrete mucus. So mucus is secreted by the greater vestibular gland and uh, in male reproductive system you have seen the cowper glands are pea sized and they also secrete mucus. That is why the greater vestibular glands are said to be homologous to the cowper's gland and the secretion of these two are involved in the lubrication of the penis and uh, uh, what we say. Uh, successful copulation. Apart from that, if you look after the vulva, here towards that of the posterior part of the vulva, there is the joining of the labia majora, sorry minora. So that particular part is called as foreset. And below the foreset is the space. So the space between the vulva and the anus, so that is called as perineum. Perineum is a place which is having various of the functions some of them are this perineum is involved in defecation parturition and sexual intercourse and thereafter is the vagina so vagina is being covered by a thin membrane that is called as hymen so this hymen is said to be a proof for virginity if it is being torn then uh, it is being believed that a girl or a female has lost her virginity. So that is not so because as we have discussed in the earlier video also that hymen basically is a very sensitive and a thin membrane which can get easily ruptured. Okay, Because nowadays the girls are being uh, performing various sports activities so it may be like gymnastics or it may be like long jump in such cases it may get uh, ruptured. So henceforth nowadays Hymen is not said to be a proof for virginity and this hymen is porous in nature and that allows uh, the menstrual flow or the blood to flow during the menstrual phase. Thereafter next part is the G spot or it is called as Grafenberg spot. In the vagina towards the anterior part of the vagina just 2 inches inside the anterior part of the vagina consists of a particular region that is called as G-spot. So whenever the penis enters into the vagina, that penis gets uh, uh, friction to that of the G-spot and whenever the G-spot gets friction with that of the uh, penis, so that brings about the sexual arousal in females along with that of organism in the females. So here, the external genitalia, what we had discussed is mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, vestibule and vestibular glands. So for your need or for the aims, what you have to remember is 
Labia majora is homologous to scrotum. Labia minora is homologous to penile urethra. Clitoris, which is an erectile tissue, is homologous to penis. Vestibule is homologous to membranous urethra. Meanwhile, in the glands, lesser vestibular glands or skinny's glands are homologous to prostate gland and Bartholin's glands are homologous to Cowper's gland. All the glands are homologous where structurally they may be similar but functionally they are different. So this is all about today's video that is external genitalia or vulva. Thank you.